God bless you, loved ones. Welcome to the Word with Chester. Today we'll continue study in the 11th chapter of the book of 1 Corinthians. In our last setting, we read down to verse 16. Today we'll begin our reading at verse 17. God bless each of you. Thank you so much for logging on. Shall we go into our study today? The 17th verse of the 11th chapter of the book of 1 Corinthians, it reads as this. Now in this that I declare unto you, I praise you not. Remember I told you in our last setting that Apostle Paul would uh, uh, say good words about them and praise them for their good points and then turn around and rebuke them for their bad points. Uh, he did this on more than one occasion. We, we, we saw it when we studied the book of Romans and we also see it now as we're going through the book of 1 Corinthians. Uh, and here he's, he's saying, uh, I'm not going to praise you for this act. Uh, here we are in 17 as I read it again. Now in this then I declare unto you, I praise you not, I'm not giving you any praise for this, that ye come together, that ye come together, not for the better, but for the worse. Uh, you got to get what Apostle Paul is saying. You come together, you gather together in the church building in the name of worship, but you're not coming together for the better. You're coming together for the words. Uh, we have to watch how we gather together. Our minds uh, uh, should be that of what we studied in our last session. If you were not with us, go to our archives. Look at that session. Uh, our mindset when we go into the house of the Lord should all be uh, in a humble attitude. Uh, we have to humble our attitude and know where we fit and, and know that Christ is the head of all of us. Uh, he's the head of man and man, the head of the woman and so forth as we studied in our last lesson. So Apostle Paul says, I'm not committing you for this. You come the better, uh, you come together not for the better, but for the worse. In verse 18, uh, for first of all, when ye come together in the church, I hear that there are divisions among you, and I partly believe it. Uh, remember that Apostle Paul is not there. He uh, 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 probably in his last uh, uh, last uh, months and year uh, there in Ephesus, writing this letter to the Corinthian church, uh, letting them know that I, I can't praise you for this. I hear all of these things. You got to understand that Paul preached out this church, and he had great and loyal followers was there uh, in uh, the Corinth area, and, and they reported to Paul and talked to Paul. They, they probably wrote him letters, and, and in uh, um, ways of communication in that day, they, they communicated with him. Uh, I hear that there are divisions among you, and I partly believe it. Uh, and that's, one, that's the one tool that the devil uses against the church. He uses against every entity, even in your own home. If he can cause division there, he'll get the upper hand on you, and, and Apostle Paul, I hear that there are divisions of, uh, uh, among you. Uh, well, uh, look at it in the day that we live. We got divisions in the church today. Uh, if you look at the complete body, we got divisions uh, among denomination. We got divisions among colors. Uh, and uh, I heard one preacher say, and I hope you um, understand exactly what I'm saying. He said Sunday morning between the hours of, uh, of uh, 9 o'clock and, and 1 o'clock is the most segregated time in the whole country. Why? Because you got uh, uh, black folks will go to where black folks are worshiping, vice versa, white folks to the white folks, and all of that. So there's even divisions in our world today. We got divisions among colors. Uh, uh, colors. We got divisions now that crept in the church about gender, uh, where the females claiming our rights and all this kind of stuff. It, uh, what can you see? Uh, division is not good for the body regardless of how it comes in. Uh, I know that uh, uh, especially in worship you want to be where you're comfortable and where the music is like you like it and uh, uh, what feeds you and all of that so I am not knocking you going to this church or that one going to that church but in our, our mindset shouldn't be that of color uh, our mindset shouldn't be that that I, I can't go over there and worship with those folks because they're white folks and I can't go worship with those folks because they're black folks or this group because they're Hispanic or, or Asian or whatever the case may be we should be one in the body of Christ and color and uh, uh, gender
anger should not creep in. Uh, division should not be in those areas. Uh, uh, if you uh, a woman and can't listen to a man preach, you got a problem. Uh, if you a man and a word a woman come with the word of the Lord, if it's the truth and you can't hear it, you got a problem. Uh, you got to understand that that we are one in the body of Christ, and there should not be divisions among us. Uh, well, uh, shall I continue reading and hurry up uh, for verse nineteen? For there must be also hearsay among you, uh, that they who uh, who are approved uh, may be made manifest among you. Uh, well, you got you to gotta understand all these things are going on in the day that we live, uh, just like it did in the Corinthian church. Uh, well, uh, someone come in the church and uh, we approve of them and we like them. They say the right word, act the right way for us. We'll build them up and make them manifest and made, uh, let them be made known. Uh, but somebody, uh, you don't know them, uh, but you just uh, got to, uh, you know, down, you just don't like them. Uh, they, 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 they're a little bit too worldly. They're a little bit too this. They're a little bit too that. You just don't like them. Uh, those you'll put your foot on. That's what Apostle Paul is talking about in verse 19. Let me read it. For there must be also hearsays among you that they who are approved may be made manifest uh, among you. Made manifest simply means to be made known. Uh, the ones you approve of, you make them known. You want everybody to see them. Look them up. Take them all the way up to the top. But the one you don't approve of, you try to kill him out. Kill his influence. Uh, uh, in one way or another, take him completely uh, out away from the work. Uh, that's the wrong spirit and the wrong attitude. Uh, shall we read verse 20? When you come together, therefore, unto one place, this is not to eat the Lord's Supper. Well, you got to understand, the Lord's Supper in that day, now in the day that we live, we take communion in the church, and we should, uh, uh, but uh, uh, in the day that we live, we go and we, we uh, get a small glass. Uh, some churches use juice, some churches use wine, and, and uh, a, a wafer, a cracker, whatever you use in your assembly. Uh, but in that uh, day, they had a full meal. When they gathered uh, at the church, uh, there was a full meal there for them to remember uh, uh, our Lord. Uh, 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 and uh, Jesus told us to do this uh, uh, in remembrance of Him. Uh, and so they did it, but they did it in the wrong attitude and in the wrong manner. Uh, well, uh, uh, reread verse 20 and continue. When you come together, therefore, into one place, this is not to eat uh, the Lord's Supper, when you come together, it's not just to eat the Lord's Supper. There's something uh, something greater behind it uh, than just coming to get, to get some food. Verse 21 reads, uh, For in eating, uh, everyone talketh about uh, before the other his own supper. Uh, let me read that again. For in eating, uh, everyone taketh before the other his own supper. In other words, you're going to get in there to make sure you get a good portion. Uh, and you're going to get in there and you push everybody to the side as long as you get to fill your plate up. Uh, uh, and one is hungry uh, and another drunk. Uh, you done ate all the food and somebody didn't get any food. And here's somebody else that got a little bit too much of the wine and they over there drunk. Can you understand uh, uh, that all of this stuff was going on in the Corinthian church? Uh, and don't fool yourself. Churches get out of order sometimes. Time, uh, even in the day that we live. Uh, but thank God for men of God. Thank God for the Holy Ghost that knows how to put things back in order. Shall we read verse 22? What question mark? Uh, have ye not houses to eat and, and to drink in? In other words, if you're just hungry, you could have ate at home. Uh, we come uh, to, uh, <coughs> please excuse me, sharing the Lord's Supper for a reason, uh, in remembrance of Him. Uh, not just to come here and have an eating contest, see who can eat the most food and, and uh, who can hoard the most and all of that kind of stuff. What, have ye not houses to, uh, to eat and to drink in, or despise ye the church of God? Do you despise the church of God? Uh, uh, now, now let's, let's read it. Uh, and shame them that have not. You despise the church of God, and, and you're going to get the healthier portion and leave everybody else uh, out just because, just because you can? Think about what you're doing. Uh, if you have the mindset of Christ, uh, you're really going to make sure everybody else have, even if you have to cut your Shall, 
myself a little bit short. Uh, well, uh, what shall I say to you? Uh, shall I praise you in this question mark? Uh, I praise you not. Uh, you need to be rebuked. Uh, why? Because your attitude is wrong in the house of the Lord. Uh, even in taking the Lord's Supper, your attitude is wrong. Uh, get your attitude right. Uh, you need to humble yourself uh, and, and realize uh, we're taking the Lord's Supper in the remembrance of Him. Uh, what should remember uh, what should we remember about him? Uh, he was low, meek, and humble. Uh, he was uh, a person that loved everybody. Uh, he's one that saw to everybody else's needs even before he saw to his own. Uh, he gave his life so that you would live. Uh, if you're going to take communion, remember what he did. Uh, it's more than just bloodshed. Uh, although, thank God for the shedding of his blood. Uh, but remember all of him. Uh, do it in remembrance of him when we come together. Uh, well, shall we read in verse 23, uh, for I have received of the Lord, that which also I delivered unto you, uh, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. Uh, here we are, Apostle Paul is giving them something to remember. Uh, well, uh, when the Lord Jesus was betrayed, talking about the Lord's Supper, he took bread. Uh, uh, he took bread in verse 24, uh, and when he had given thanks, he broke it uh, and said, take, eat, this is my body, uh, which is broken for you. Uh, this do in remembrance of me. Get that in your mindset. Uh, when you have communion, when you take communion, many churches do it on the first Sunday of the month. You remember that Sunday coming up. Uh, remember that I am doing this in remembrance of the Lord. Uh, I'm not just drinking juice. Uh, I'm not just drinking this glass of wine. Or, or I'm not just eating this wafer. Uh, what I'm doing should remind me of, of the suffering that Jesus went through for me. He took bread and he broke it at that last supper. In verse 25, after this manner also, he took the cup and when he had a sup, saying, this cup is, is the New Testament in my blood. This do as often as you drink it, uh, in remembrance of me. Uh, do it in remembrance of me. Don't just do it, uh, but do it in remembrance of our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. Shall we continue reading? Uh, For as often as ye eat this bread uh, and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he comes. Uh, my God, the communion is such a, a, a special part of service. Uh, well, uh, I will say this. If you go into a church and never serve communion, uh, well, question them. Talk to them about it. Uh, and, uh, I, 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 well, uh, I, I, let, me, let me hush on that one. Talk to them about it. Uh, and if you never receive communion, go somewhere where you can get a, a get communion uh, and commune with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and do uh, one of the ordinances or one of the commandments that he told us to do. Uh, do this in remembrance of him. Uh, well, shall we read verse 27? Uh, wherefore, wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord uh, unworthily uh, shall be guilty of the blood, uh, uh, the body and the blood of the Lord. Whoever drinks it unworthily. Now, now wait a minute. Let me, let me explain that. Uh, if you know good and well, you're not saved. You know good and well you have not been born again. Uh, you know good and well that you have not received the Lord as your personal Savior. Uh, you know good and well uh, that you're not living where uh, 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 any type of life uh, that, that the Lord would have you to do. Now, I'm not saying every little mistake you make, you got to no, know you can't. I'm not even going there. Uh, but if you know good and well you have not accepted our Lord as your personal Savior, and you're not not even trying to do what he told you to do. You need to not take communion. Now this is the word of the Lord. I think it's necessary for me, for me to read verse 27 again. Wherefore, uh, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily uh, shall be guilty of the blood of the body and the blood of the Lord. Verse 28, but let a man examine himself and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. Well, uh, I, I've heard people that, that have made mistakes in life, and, and when they go to church, they won't take communion. Uh, well, uh, I would say this now. Uh, if you know you made a mistake in life, the thing for you to do is repent of that sin. Uh, ask God 
to forgive you of that sin, and he will forgive you. He'll forgive you. Well, if you if you confess your sin, he's faithful and just to forgive you your sin. Ask him to forgive you. He will forgive you. And if you have wronged any of the brothers and sisters in your assembly, go to them, ask them forgiveness, and go, so you're free to drink of the Lord's Supper and, and, and take of the bread, take of the body of Christ. Shall we read verse 20, 29? For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh uh, uh, the drink of judgment, the old King James version says, drink of damnation or drink of judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. What am I saying? If you know good and well you don't have the Lord in your life and you haven't asked him to come in and you just don't live in any kind of way that you think you big enough to live, you should not take the Lord's Supper until you can ask him to forgive me and be sincere about it. Until you can go before him and say, Lord, I have sinned against you. Forgive me for my sins and wash my sins away. Don't you know he'll do it if you ask him? But don't take the Lord's Supper unworthily. You know as soon as you leave church, you're going to go down to uh, to the uh, whatever place you're going to go and do the wrong thing. If you're going back to the crack house after you leave church, don't take the Lord's communion. But you ought to make up your mind that you're not going back down there. That you're going to quit that lifestyle and serve the Lord Jesus Christ. Shall we read verse 30? Uh, For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, uh, and many sleep. Uh, for this cause, because they, they took the Lord's Supper unworthily. Uh, in so many words, they were there playing church. Uh, they wasn't serious about living the life. They wasn't serious about being truly uh, one of the disciples of Christ. They were there just playing church. Uh, uh, but because of this, this cause, uh, many, many, not just a few, uh, this, uh, uh, for this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, uh, and many sleep. Some are even dead. That's what he's talking about. Some are dead uh, because they were playing church. Uh, some were dead because they really didn't believe uh, uh, on, the, on the true and the living God and accept them as their personal Savior. Uh, let's read verse 31. Uh, For if we would judge ourselves, uh, we should not be judged. I'd rather judge myself. Uh, then I won't have to worry about being judged uh, by others. Uh, but when we are judged, we are are chest chastened of the Lord that we should not be condemned with the world. When we're judged, when the Lord judges you, you're chastened. Why? Because the Lord want to get you to where you need to be and the way you ought to be in Him. The Lord loves you, my friends. He loves you, and He wants you to be an overcomer. Shall we read verse 33? Wherefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat, tarry one for another. Wait on someone one. Wait one for another. Uh, don't try to be the one that gets to the head of the line to get the get the most food or make sure your person your portion is what it should be. Uh, be thoughtful of others. Wait on others. Uh, uh, shall we read verse 34? And if any man hunger, let him eat at home. If you're that just because you're hungry, you need to eat at home. Uh, if any man hunger, let him eat at home. Uh, that that ye come not together under judgment. Uh, do come for the right reason. Uh, come to fellowship with the saints. Uh, come to commune with the saints. Uh, come to remember our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. Uh, this is why you gather. If you're hungry, eat at home. You got something in there. You uh, Back then they didn't have ice boxes, but they had something to keep the food in. Uh, well, you got to understand. They uh, you get, get that in your picture, in your mind. Uh, uh, you got food at home, don't come here just to get full. Eat your food at home, but come here to fellowship with the saints. Come here to take of the Lord's body and the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ in remembrance of him. Well, uh, the latter part of verse 34, and the rest will I set in order when I come. Uh, Apostle Paul is letting him know I'm coming to you. Uh, now, I rebuke you many times. Uh, I know I got some more to say, but I can't put it all on you today. Uh, I can't put it all on you on one time. Uh, but when I come, uh, everything else is 
because it's not right, we're going to set in order. Can you understand the Apostle Paul was dealing with a church that had strayed away and were doing so many things contrary to the way our Lord would want us to be. And Apostle Paul being the, the chief apostle, the Apostle Paul being the one that was, was, the, was chosen, and preached this church uh, church out, uh, took it upon himself, uh, and the, the Holy Spirit led him uh, to set in order this church. Uh, and sometimes your church needs to be set in order, uh, and God has ways to do it. Uh, churches get off, but God knows how to get back, get them back on. Uh, I want you to know I love you, my friends. Uh, I love you with the love of the Lord. Uh, if you would like to contact me for any reason, uh, you can write me at the Word with Chester Ministries, uh, Post Office Box 200. 483 San Antonio, Texas 78220 You can also write me uh, at my website C contact me at my website www.poemsbychester.com Remember, I love you my friends I love you with the love of the Lord God bless you